This is Malika Hook from the University of Colorado, and the topic today is techniques for a better capsulorexis. Cataract surgery is the most frequently performed outpatient surgery in the United States with nearly 4 million eyes treated last year. As the number of surgeries increases each year, the demand for enhanced outcomes is also steadily increasing. Capsulorexis is historically a difficult skill to master. It has implications for both intraoperative and postoperative success. Intraoperatively, the lack of a continuous curvilinear capsulorexis can lead to difficulty in removing the cataractus lens. And postoperatively, the lack of a well-centered and round capsulorexis can lead to less than ideal visual outcomes. Historically, the opening in the anterior capsule to access the cataractus lens has evolved over time from a cystotome used to open the capsule in 1750 to the continuous curvilinear capsulorexis we use today. The continuous curvilinear capsulorexis has several advantages, including continuity in the tear leading to ensured capsular strength. And it is also cost-effective and widely available since it's done freehand. You can see in the upper right-hand side a cystotome used to create the entire continuous curvilinear capsulorexis while on the bottom right-hand side, you see capsulorexis forceps used to achieve the same result. There are, however, several limitations, including prevention of radial tears being more difficult when you're doing something freehand. Achieving a predictable diameter when you're doing something freehand can also be understandably difficult. And I think it's safe to say that extensive experience is required to master this step. Publications have suggested that there is a Goldilocks zone for the capsulorexis, if you make it too small, under 4 millimeters, this could lead to nighttime dysphotopsias. Too large, over 6 millimeters, might lead to increased PCO. The shape and the centration is also important, with perfectly round and centered capsulorexes leading to improved eye well centration. There is a growing body of evidence that demonstrates significant clinical advantages of a perfectly centered 5.5 millimeter continuous curvilinear capsulorexis. The best way to improve outcomes is likely to level the playing field by taking the human factor out of the equation. However, relying on expensive machines will lead to a cost-benefit analysis that is currently one of the most important drivers in healthcare. The alternatives include femtosecond lasers, thermal-based devices, as well as surgical calipers. Femtosecond lasers have multiple advantages, including precision, as well as the requirement of less phacoemulsification emulsification power due to segmentation of the lens. The limitations, however, are numerous, including very high cost. Does less phaco power lead to improved outcomes? That currently does not appear to be the case, with several publications showing equal results with both phaco without and with femtosecond laser. Using femtosecond lasers can be extremely disruptive in the operating room since it is currently done in a separate room prior to bringing the patient into the OR for the phaco emulsification part of the surgery. And there are still questions about the strength of the capsulorexis compared to the standard continuous curvilinear capsulorexis done freehand. The questions about anterior capsulotomy integrity have persisted since the introduction of the technology. You can see here as I'm pointing towards the continuous curvilinear capsulorexis done freehand, the smooth surface of the edge of the capsulorexis compared to the sawtooth nature of the capsulorexis done with femtosecond laser. And of course, this is done because the spots are done individually going around the capsulorexis. On face value, you might think that the outcomes would be pretty much the same between the two. But the problems arise when the capsulorexis done with the femtosecond laser is not continuous with some of the laser spots outside of the diameter of the capsulorexis. This can lead to tears that become radial and can disrupt the surgery. Femtosecond laser capsulorexis is overall effective. Complications are far less now. The cost and surgical flow limitations are currently major drawbacks and I think will improve over time, especially with the introduction of femtosecond lasers that can exist in the same operating room where we do the phaco emulsification. There have been several thermal technologies introduced to the market. I have performed capsulorexis with both the Fugo blade and Zepto and find them both very easy to use with reproducible outcomes. There are several pros and cons to using these thermal devices. On the pro side, it is less disruptive compared to the femtosecond laser because it can be done in the same operating room where you're doing the rest of the cataract surgery. 
It's more cost effective than the femtosecond laser, but of course this is relative since it's much more expensive than doing it freehand with a cystotome or forcep. The predictability and consistency is yet to be determined because we don't have wide ranging studies with either the Fugo blade or the Zepto device. On the con side, there is added cost and time, and there is evidence that the Capsulorex is done with thermal devices is not as strong as that done freehand. The last category is surgical calipers. A device that is more prevalent on the European market is the Tassignon ring. This is a device that is placed on the capsule and used to visually guide the capsular axis opening. On the right-hand side, you see the varus ophthalmic caliper. This is a device that came out of my laboratory at the University of Colorado. This device allows for walking the capsular axis along the inner edge to produce a well-centered and perfectly round capsular axis. We created this device with a micro pattern surface on both sides of the device to enhance adherence to the capsule. We published results of the preclinical work with the varus capsular axis in the Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery in 2014. And you can see here a reproducible five millimeter capsular axis done in cadaver eyes. This gave us faith in moving this project forward and we eventually commercialized this product in the United States and internationally. This is a video of a surgeon doing their first case with varus. The insertion can be done with a Y hook or with capsular excess forceps as you see here. The initial puncture of the anterior capsule can be done with the duet forceps, which are then used to walk the anterior capsule along the inner diameter of the varus ring. An extremely important step when performing the surgery is placing the device over the anterior capsule and then tamponading the device against the anterior capsule with a dispersive viscoelastic. The surgeon performs a 360 degree continuous curvilinear capsular axis that is perfectly round as guided by the inner diameter of the varus device. The varus device is then removed with either a Sinsky hook or the, in this case, capsular axis forceps. The pros for such devices include cost effectiveness. These devices are less expensive than the thermal devices or femtosecond lasers. It's also less disruptive to the flow in the operating room since again, it is done streamlined with the rest of the cataract surgery. I like these devices as a teaching tool for residents when they're doing their first few capsulorexes, and you can also leverage the strength and predictability of a continuous curvilinear capsulorexis. On the con side, the reimbursement strategy is not clear, so cost can be an issue. It also adds some time to the cataract surgery, just like thermal devices and femtosecond lasers can. Conclusions and future directions. The continuous curvilinear capsular axis continues to be the gold standard while performed freehand with assistatome or capsular axis forceps. There is increasing focus on reproducibility with multiple publications showing that a well-rounded and perfectly centered capsular axis leads to better visual outcomes. Femtosecond lasers are here to stay, and the big question we have now is, will we see a leap towards monofocal lenses and away from just concentrating on torques and multifocals? Can we actually get that to make economic sense? Novel intraocular lenses will leverage the perfect rexus, and that might be the new driver towards novel capsular rexus devices. Alternative methods for consistency are, in my opinion, here to stay to enhance the outcomes as stated above. Some of the future methods that might increase adoption of these novel devices include minimizing the cost so that they can be absorbed or bundled into the service of performing cataract surgery. Can we find ways to streamline the flow in the operating room so it's less disruptive? And I'm thinking here in particular about femtosecond lasers. Can we adapt some of the technologies so that they can be teamed up with phaco emulsification machines and make the flow even more efficient? What we're searching for here is a sweet spot to balance the outcomes with the economics to make this feasible for the masses. Further educational resources include keogt.com and the YouTube and Instagram channels that you see linked below. Thank you for your time.